What is going on, gunfighters? Welcome back to Gunfighter Life, the podcast where we talk about gunfighting the right way with God at the center where he should be in real world firsthand experience. Today we're going to be talking about Spitzer Bullets full powered rifle rounds in lever action rifles. If you want to skip the bio, skip around 3 minutes and 45 seconds from now to get into the main topic. Who am I? A question we should all ask ourselves. I am, first and foremost, a servant of of God made in his very own image a follower of Jesus Christ a simple man called by God to the Great Commission to share the good news of Jesus Christ next a little bit about my background and what God has allowed me to do and bless me to do in life Grew up what most would consider very poor in the backwoods of the southeastern and mid-Atlantic United States, hunting and fishing. Joined the Marine Corps at 17, did a couple of combat tours in Iraq, so a decorated Marine Corps combat veteran, infantry assaultman. After the combat tours... I was an urban warfare instructor for the United States Marine Corps under Mojave Viper. I also served in the U.S. Army, both full-time and part-time National Guard. Also a veteran of law enforcement, I served with LAPD. I was a sworn peace officer, a cop for LAPD. I worked regular patrol assignments and more specialized assignments. One of those more specialized assignments was warrant service fugitive recovery also had some other law enforcement roles I am an FBI certified firearms instructor and been certified by another three letter government agency in a lot of firearms and training things I've also been a private contractor worked in the private sector Pertaining to tactics and gunfighting and protecting America from enemies foreign and domestic. I served as the commander of a tactical team to stop active shooters in a large metropolitan area. That was our primary mission to stop active shooters, which sadly are a thing in America today. I've also been blessed to do quite a bit of competition shooting Started my first formal competitions even before joining the Marine Corps at 17. I had one more shooting competitions than I can remember. I have competed in all manner of disciplines in shooting. I've been blessed to be a state rifle and pistol champion. West Coast regional champion. Like I said, been blessed to win more shooting competitions than I can remember. I mentioned hunting. I've hunted to put meat on the table. Starting when I was a child, I've also been a professional big game hunter and guide, hunting and slaying all manner of beast. And I don't apologize for that. Humbled to be the host of three podcasts. Simple Man Sermons, Alpha Male Podcast, and Gumfighter Life. Obviously, as things not mentioned, I've been blessed to do many other things. But, again, first and foremost, I'm a servant. A servant of God, a believer and follower of the Bible, the Word, Jesus Christ. And I don't apologize for that. With that, let's transition into today's topic. So, Spitzer type bullets, regular traditional full-powered rifle cartridges, your 30 alt 6 your 308. Why are they not the norm for lever-action rifles? Well, the fundamental issue with this is 
most traditional lever action rifles. I'm talking your Winchester Model 94s, Model 92s, your Marlin 336s. They have a tubular magazine underneath the barrel historically, much like most shotguns do. Well, this presents a fundamental problem for traditional Spitzer style pointed bullets. As you know, if you can picture in your mind, you stack those bullets in that tube front to back, front to back. I won't say what we call that in the military. However, the entire point of a primer in the rear of a cartridge is to detonate when struck with a pointed object. That is what it's designed to do. It's designed to detonate that cartridge. If you stack a pointed object behind it in a magazine tube, especially under recoil or dropping it, you can see how that presents a problem. You could cause a chain detonation and have your entire magazine explode or one or more rounds explode in your magazine. That's obviously a problem. So historically, rounds in a lever action rifle are not pointed, they are rounded. And to be fair, lever action rifles came about at a time before we really discovered, or before, I should say more accurately, before Spitzer type bullets were common. So they didn't need it. And at the time, a tubular magazine made a lot of sense. And nobody cared about the pointed Spitzer bullets in there because that's not what was being fired at the time. You know, your traditional Winchester Model 94, your pre-64 Winchester, that doesn't stand for 19. That stands for 18. Designed in 1894. Likewise, the early predecessors of the modern Marlin rifles came out way back in the 1800s. And this transitional period where Spitzer bullets were not super common, box magazines were not super common. Long range shooting really wasn't a thing. Optical sights, while they may have existed, were not common. So understanding where this came from, and that, and that may help you appreciate what we're going to talk about today a little bit more. So historically, in traditional lever-action rifles, they're not designed to fire Spitzer bullets, nor is it safe to do so. However, this is not a new idea. You know, the Henry Long Ranger is not a new thing, firing a 308, a Spitzer 30-06 full-powered rifle cartridge, something of that power and that trajectory is not new. The Winchester 1895 is a thing, and as the name implies, it came out in 1895. It was used, from what I understand, to good effect. Not by the Americans, as we think of as Americans being the lever-action country, but rather by the Russians. That's right, the Russians used the Winchester 1895 in Russia and in the First World War, when we were using bolt actions. We all think of them as having the Mosin Nagant in 7.62 by 54R. Well, they also had Winchester 1895s way back that they used back in World War I and reportedly to good effect and were well-liked. That's right, a lever-action gun used way back then with Spitzer bullets. If you're not familiar with the 7.62 by 54R, for argument's sake, let's call it ballistically basically identical to a 30 6 Now, I know there's a lot more modern loadings and sporting loadings for a 30 6 than there are for 7.62 by 54R, especially here in America. But you look at like the original military loadings for both, and very close. Bolt action rifles did this mainly when they went to Spitzer Bullets. They used a box magazine or stripper clips or something like that an internal box magazine or detachable box magazine, but a box magazine where the rounds are stacked on top of each other instead of front to back eliminates this problem with detonating the round in a tubular magazine. The 1895 is a thing, and it's still a cool rifle. Teddy Roosevelt used it. Last I checked, Winchester still made it, and you can still get the 1895 in 30 .6, or if you want the Dragoon version, the the beefy version to go hunt rhinoceros and grizzly bear or whatever. They make it in 405 Winchester, which is a cool round. I don't want to get in too big of a rabbit hole, but a really cool round. I know that this came out around the same time. It's the Savage 99. 
it says in the research that I did, designed 1892 to 1899, so I'm not exactly sure which one came out first, but one of its contemporaries, and a gun that doesn't get a lot of love, I think revolutionary for its time, is the Savage Model 99. This is a lever-action rifle designed in the 1800s that you can get chambered in 308 and a bunch of other really modern calibers. In fact, it pioneered the Savage 99. Savage had a bunch of really cool rounds that were thought of as like flat shooting and revolutionary for the time. The 300 Savage, I do believe, predates the 308. You look at the ballistics on those, it's kind of astounding. A lot of really cool rounds. The Savage 99 does not look like a traditional lever action gun, but it does. It does look like a beautiful traditional rifle wood and steel and beautifully finished and the lines on it are elegant and understated it really is a cool gun and again it comes in a full powered rifle cartridge you could get them chambered all day long in 308 and a bunch of other really cool calibers it also has a rotary magazine which you might be familiar with and say a ruger 1022 well that wasn't invented for the ruger 1022 this Savage Model 99 has that, and one of the really cool features of the rifle, some of them even have round counters. That's a really cool feature. This rifle, I think, was so ahead of its time, it kind of is underappreciated, in my opinion. There were times when these were kind of a dime a dozen. I didn't buy one because I'm not a gun collector, but if I was, this would be a really cool rifle. They are beautiful. Beautiful. And still, to this day, very capable hunting implements. Just a few really cool calibers this was chambered in. And this is from the Wikipedia page. Give credit where credit is due. The 22 Savage High Power. The 22 250. Great varmint calibers there. Starting with the modern high power rifle rounds for medium to large game hunting. 243. The 308. The 358. That'd be a hoss. That'd be a... That'd be a beefy hunting implement there. 7mm 08. The 284. That would be really cool. A 284 is even still today what people, a lot of people would consider one of the most well balanced North American hunting cartridges, and I probably would agree. The 375 Winchester. Talk about a beefy, beefy gun. They even made one, it says here, in 410 shotgun. That's pretty cool. And again, this came out in the 1800s. Now, obviously, a lot of those rounds were not in the 1800s. But the idea of firing a Spitzer bullet in a lever-action gun, again, nothing new. This is not new with the Henry Long Ranger. Since I mentioned that, there probably is renewed vigor in Spitzer-type long-range performance in lever-action guns when something like that comes out. The Henry... Henry the Henry Long Ranger has a lever action gun chambered in modern calibers, 6.5 Creedmoor, 308, and maybe some others that I'm not aware of. That's pretty cool. Again, but nothing new. One of the patrons, and I should point out, this is how this podcast episode by God's grace, was inspired. The, one of the Patreon chats, you can be a part of that if you become a patron. But anyway, they were talking about this, and one of them pointed out the Winchester Model 88. And that looks very akin to the Savage 99. It is a beautiful rifle. It doesn't look like a traditional, let's say, Winchester 94, but it definitely looks like a traditional American rifle. And it's beautiful. They're beautiful rifles. And they made those again in 308 and probably some other similar calibers. The Winchester Model 88. A beautiful, beautiful gun. You know, there's nothing wrong. And it's really cool to hunt with a Winchester Model 94. But maybe you want a little bit more reach, a little bit more power. Perhaps the Winchester Model 88 is a logical step up for that. It's a beautiful, beautiful gun. Let me talk about one of what I consider the quintessential, let's say mid-20th century, lever-action, spitzer-firing, modern cartridge-firing, hunting guns. And that's the Browning BLR. 
You talk about a well-made, finely crafted, beautifully finished piece of firepower. The Browning BLR, which stands for Browning Lever Action Rifle. They make an automatic version, not to be confused with the, confused with the military you know, machine gun, the BAR. But they have a sporting rifle called the Browning Automatic Rifle. They also have a lever action version, which I'm talking about. The BLR, the Browning Lever Action Rifle. And they are just gorgeous. Even just the regular base model is gorgeous. And they make some really nice, like, higher-end models. It's not really my style. I beat the crap out of stuff when I hunt with it. I hunt hard. I hunt long, dirty. But for, like, a gentleman's high-powered lever action rifle... They're great, and they have a lot of advantages of modern guns. They're made of really good quality steel. They have really good optics mounting options because, you know, there's only so much you can do with a long-range cartridge in field conditions. I know you can shoot long-range with iron sights. Believe me, I've done that. But I'm talking in field conditions with identifying your game and getting shots off quickly at long point-blank distances. You really need good optics to take advantage of that a lot of times. And the BLR lets you do that. Just regular traditional hunting scopes. Let's say you're quintessential, which I'm not a big fan of, but you're quintessential 3-9. to nine. You can just get a good quality Leopold or something else 3-9 to nine power scope and just mount it right on there. Much like a bolt action rifle. And you have a 308 with a 3-9 to nine scope. But you got a lever action. If you want a lever action, you just want something beautiful and elegant and different. And the BLR, to me, is that. They are... Uh, it'd be hard to judge because, I mean, the Savage 99 is just so far ahead of its time and so cool because it was designed in the 1800s. But if you're talking just sheer beauty and craftsmanship, to me, the Browning BLR really is the most beautiful and finely finished. That being said, I've never handled a Winchester 1895 in person. But every Browning BLR that I can remember ever seeing and handling just struck me as a beautiful piece of craftsmanship and just a beautiful gun. Well made, well balanced, again, finely finished. And they make these in all kinds of calibers or have made them on all kinds of calibers. We're talking the other ones firing 308, 30 out 6 type rounds. Well, the Browning BLR, they make with, you know, the 243 Winchester, which is probably what I would want. It's a great medium sized game round. But they also make them that fire the 7mm Remington Magnum. And they make them that fire the 300 Winchester Magnum. And even the 450 Marlin. These are big, big cartridges. If you don't know, the 300 Win Mag is kind of the standard for you know, Magnum rifle cartridges is what most of them get compared to because it is by far probably the most popular. The 300 Win Mag and the 7 Rem Mag are probably by far the most popular Magnum hunting cartridges. And this is a lever action that will handle those. So if it's strong enough to handle those, it ought to very easily handle a 243, a 308. The fact that it handles those big beefy rounds is kind of a testament to how well they're made and how well they're constructed. According to Wikipedia, the cartridges available, and I'm not going to read all of them, but some really common ones. 223, pretty cool. 243, 270, 270 Winchester short mag, that's pretty cool. 284 Winchester discontinued, 30 out 6. 300 Winchester Magnum, 300 Winchester short magnum, that's pretty cool. The 358 Winchester, 450 Marlin, 65 Creedmoor, 7mm Remington Magnum, and several others. Pretty cool. There are probably other, you know, box magazine fed lever action rifles. These are the ones I'm familiar with, the ones that come to mind, or the ones that the Patreons brought to my attention. Thank you again to the patrons. So, one of the things we talked about in this is if you could have a lever action rifle, if someone is just going to give you a lever action rifle that you couldn't sell, it wasn't like Teddy Roosevelt's, you know, lever action rifle that was worth $5 million that you could auction, but one that you were going to keep and hunt with, whether this or a traditional lever action rifle, what would your lever action rifle of choice be? Again, if you're a patron, you can, we can talk about this all the time. 
you're not and you want people to find out, if you're listening on iTunes, you can leave a review and then scroll down and leave it in the review. Say, hey, good podcast. I like the one on lever actions. My go-to lever action would be blah, whatever that is. Just a way to be part of the community. If you want to contact me, speaking of being part of the community, if you want to contact me, you can at our website, goodshepherdtraining.com. Goodshepherdtraining.com. There's also a little shop icon on there if you want some cool merchandise. Really cool bailout bags, grab and go, kind of emergency bags for your go to fighting handgun and emergency medical stuff on there. Or just a cool gum fighting coffee cup. Anyhow, we, we talked a lot about these lever action guns that fire full power cartridges. Why might you want this? That's the obvious question. Who cares? Why? When I could get it in a bolt action. Well, I'm going to be honest. Sometimes you just want something different. Sometimes you just want something cool. Will these rifles really do anything that a good bolt action won't do in the same caliber? No, not really. And although this gets rid of the inherent problem of firing a Spitzer bullet, one of the other inherent problems with rifle accuracy is being able to free float a barrel. And you can't generally free float a lever action gun. Uh, I might be wrong, but I don't know of any that you can free float the barrel. Which doesn't mean that they can't be very accurate. It just means in general they take more work, like custom bedding and all kinds of other things, to get them to be very accurate. Why deal with all the hassle and all the fuss? Well, again, because they're cool. Because if you spot and stalk hunt at practical distances, you know, a two minute gun is plenty because that's six inches at 300 yards. And that's probably if you're shooting standing offhand with a sling plenty plenty accurate for you if you like to hunt in the dark timber of idaho the thick nasty quaky aspen trees of colorado getting jump shots you know at elk and you want a fast handling gun in let's say 300 wind mag you do that with a lever action with a blr you're hunting the northeast and your longest shot's going to be 100 yards you just want a lever action gun get one in a 308 you could get a Winchester Model 88. Let's say that you just wanted to go hunting out west like Theodore Roosevelt with a classic gun. One of the guns that he hunted with was a Winchester 1895. You could still buy one of those and hunt with it. If you want to be completely practical, you could probably get a lighter, more accurate gun in a bolt action. But sometimes it's just nice to hunt with a gun that has a little bit of character. And I think the Winchester 1895 has that. Maybe you just have a gun that was your father's or your grandfather's or your uncle's. You have a Savage Model 99 and 308 or 243 or 300 Savage or whatever. You know what? It'll still kill deer just fine. Deer have not started to produce body armor yet that I'm aware of. We'll still put deer in the dirt. There are still great tools for that. If you want to just remember days of yore. When America produced really good products and really fine guns with classic wood and blued steel, men hunted in red flannel shirts and Jones hats. Maybe you want to go hunt in a red flannel shirt and a Jones hat. Take your Savage Model 99. Walking farm fields, you know, in, I don't know, Illinois or Michigan or something like that. You <laughs> Make hunting great again. Anyway, there's a lot of reasons why you might want this. Another more modern practical one is you may live in a state, sadly, that restricts your right to have a semi-automatic firearm with a detachable box magazine. This is an option if you want a full-powered rifle cartridge in a detachable box magazine, but it's not semi-automatic. It's manually operated, and it's a good rate of fire. I don't think you're really going to notice the rate of fire advantage in most situations hunting because you have to reacquire the target, and the target's probably going to have moved. A significant distance after you fire the first shot so the difference in speed between a bolt action and a lever in most situations is kind of a moot point but in a tactical situation it might not be and a good full powered lever action is a actual modern application not because it's the most modern best choice but because of legislation where rights have been infringed it may be a good viable option still you know, maybe sadly you're in California, but you're on the border. You're in big open country, on a ranch, riding a quad or something like that. And you can't have an AR. This has got some kind of weird California things on it. 
maybe a Browning BLR in 308 with a good LPVO mounted to it would be quite a bit of firepower and it would be legal. So there are there are reasons, whether for nostalgia or because you're kind of restricted. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Gunfighter Life. Talked about going to the website goodshepherdtraining.com. Also, if you want to contact me, same thing. As a thanks for staying tuned till the end of the episode, the tactical tip of the day. Talking about being outside, being in natural environments, shooting, hunting, tactical applications. One thing most soldiers and Marines will have on them is a pen and paper. One thing the military uses a lot, especially in the infantry, as I can speak to firsthand. I was primary MOS in the Marine Corps, U.S. Marine Corps and Army Infantry. Notebook, pen and paper. It may not sound super tactical, but you know, knowing the dope on your rifle and having it written down or having notes that are pertinent to your situation, that is practical. Write in the rain notebooks. If you don't have one, they're not super expensive. They, as the name implies, write in the rain, and when they get wet, they don't smear and go all over the place. Just one of those and a pencil. There's a lot of utility in that. That's your tactical tip of the day. I don't often mention you know, products, but right in the rain, notebooks are not expensive, and they have a lot of utility. And if you're just going to throw it in the dashboard of your truck to write down stuff you need from the hardware store, you know, just a regular old 88 cent notebook or whatever they cost now with inflation is fine. But if you want something that you're going to have for a long time, it goes in your pocket, outside, in the inclement weather, things like that, right in the rain, notebook, it's kind of cool when it's worth the extra money and they're still not crazy expensive you're not talking like a hundred dollars for a notebook they're they're a good piece of kit to have and that's your tactical tip of the day right in the rain notebook also the pages make good tinder if you need to start a fire they're essentially wax paper with that let's roll into the tactical verse of the day the tactical verse of the day from deuteronomy 26 Also today, the Lord has proclaimed you to be his special people, just as he promised you that you should keep all his commandments and that he will set you high above all nations, which he has made, in praise, in name, and in honor, and that you may be a holy people to the Lord your God, just as he has spoken. With that, gunfighters, be strong, be courageous, be holy and have a blessed day. Amen.